I think you have Parkinson's disease. These were the words spoken to me by, after an examination by a neurologist in Findlay, Ohio. We were there to see what diagnosis he would give of the various and confusing symptoms that I was experiencing. My primary family physician had arranged for an emergency appointment to the neurologist. The words were spoken to me over seven years ago in, on, in September of 2013, and they were words that changed my, our lives. It was a game changer. After visiting a little bit more, he printed off some basic information about Parkinson's disease for us to inform us about what we were, this new reality we were experiencing. He also gave me a prescription for the common Parkinson's medicine. And, uh, and that, that it was given to almost anybody that ever had Parkinson's cinnamon. He also said there was uh, no f fool print, no fool proof of diagnosing Parkinson's. Okay, let me start that over. Sometimes I lose my place a little bit here. Okay, he said that there was no final proof or no foolproof way of diagnosing Parkinson's. No blood disease, no blood uh, test or anything like that. And he also said, which is encouraging, is there's no cure. No way to diagnose it for sure and no cure. Well, that was not encouraging. The medications were there only to slow the symptoms. The way you could tell if you had Parkinson's by, was by observing whether the prescribed medications would work. And if they worked, then you had Parkinson's. If they didn't work, well, okay, it's probably something else. I never had tremors in my hand, except maybe in the last couple of weeks I felt a few tremors. Maybe that'll help uh, stir my coffee in the morning, I'm not sure. But I've never had tremors, and that's been a, a, a realization that only 30% of people actually did not have, do not have tremors. Now just a reminder of what Parkinson's is. I'm sure some of you know this, uh, but it's a progressive neurological disease that results from the gradual loss of brain cells that produce dopamine, a chemical that sends messages to the part of the brain and controls movement and coordination. As Parkinson's develops, progresses, dopamine in the front in the brain decreases, leaving a person unable to control movement normally. And if you remember uh, Fox, the uh, actor, uh, you saw some of his movements when, when he was in something. The key motor symptoms of Parkinson's are tremor, slowness of movement, muscular rigidity, and uh, postural instability. You see some people with pa Parkinson's bent way over and we're trying, we're trying desperately to try to avoid that. And impaired balance and coordination. Other symptoms may include pain, dementia, or confusion, fatigue, sleep disturbances, depression, constipation, cognitive changes, and fear or anxiety. Sounds pretty interesting, doesn't it? After some time of taking the Parkinson's medication, it became obvious that it was working well at mitigating the symptoms, and I was able to function considerably better. This meant that it was most likely that indeed I did have Parkinson's. Several months later, the diagnosis was confirmed by a doctor in the Cleveland Clinic, and if you know Cleveland Clinic, that's one of the high uh, hospitals in, in, in the world and they had an excellent uh, uh, Parkinson's unit and they confirmed that I had it. Well, let's back up a little bit. What are some of the symptoms that came to surface in my situation that gave us cause to concern? 
In the late summer of early fall of 2012, Grace Mennonite Church in Pandora, Ohio, where I was serving as pastor, gave me a sabbatical for study, encouragement, refreshment, and refreshment for the ministry. We spent most of this time in a family cabin in Colorado. During the sabbatical, I noticed that my, I had very little stamina for walking and hiking that we normally enjoyed in the mountains. It felt like I was always fatigued, always breathless. I also noticed a certain amount of muscle pain that was not normal for me. The Sunday that I returned to the pulpit in October of 2012, after sabbatical at that time, my voice was very raspy. And no amount of coughing to clear my throat or drinking water could clear it. It was a miserable preaching Sunday. A friend of the church asked if I was sick, and I assured her that I was not sick, and I was certain that this problem was only a nuke, uh, a fluke occurrence. It was not. But for several months following my, for several months, for some time, I did, I was dragging and shuffling my feet when walking. That was a, a sign to me, especially my left foot. I felt like I was going to trip and fall, but I never did. My balance was also compromised. As the summer of 2013 came around, various symptoms began in intensity. It was coincidental that we were having at, at uh, Grace Mennonite Church at that time a series on health and well-being, and I felt as pastor anything but well-being. I was scheduled to perform a wedding in the fall of one of my daughter's really good friends, and I felt like I had to give him a call and cancel it for me because I could, didn't know what sort of situation I'd begin, would be in, or whether I'd be healthy to do it. Now one of the biggest symptoms of that caused the most concern was the fact that my face was frozen and I couldn't smile very well or I couldn't show any emotion at all. And this definitely was not me. It's not good for a pastor not to be able to be, to be, able to smile and to have an angry look on his face all the time. I was also moving considerably slower and always looked for handrails for support. And I still do that all the time now. When in a grocery store, I used the shopping cart to steady myself. I felt uncomfortable in committee meetings as I had difficulty sometimes expressing myself and would easily lose my train of thought. I found it more and more difficult at times to make decisions. This wasn't, this just wasn't me. People began to notice that something was wrong and one person sent me an email wondering if I, if what was wrong. And he said that I exhibited, a, he said that I exhibited characteristics of a much older person. Well, that's not something you really wanna hear. People in the congregation were also a little uncomfortable with my worship leading. When getting up to preach, I would look so unsteady that people were concerned that I would make it to the pulpit or not. And sometimes I tripped, but I never, never fell down. And I was just going to say parenthetically, I know this isn't going just super well for me, but don't just, just relax. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to be okay. This is kind of the way I, I, I talk now. We're, we're fine. I also seemed to lose confidence in my speaking and would get words and sentences mixed up. This along with the raspy voice was very frustrating. Throughout my ministry, I had been complimented and on enunciating clearly and speaking with good volume. Now it seemed that that was taken away from, from me. People became so concerned that a leadership team meeting was called in which the Central District Conference Minister was invited to give counsel to address the issue. The biggest concern was to get the old dentist back. At that special meeting, it was decided to give me two months of medical leave during which time I would 
be relieved of any pastoral duties. My sole agenda was to get rest and get well, get the old Dennis back. At that point, I did not know if I would ever return to the ministry. Had I preached my last sermon? Had I performed my last baptism or child dedication blessing service? Had I served my last communion? What was in store for my future? It was shortly after the beginning of this medical leave of absence in late August or early September of 2013 that I received the diagnosis of Parkinson's. I had turned 60 in February of that year. On the one hand, it was good to receive a clear diagnosis. Now we knew with some certainty that I indeed had Parkinson's disease and what we were dealing with. At least the Parkinson's disease diagnosis ruled out other conditions which could have been far worse. But it also opened up a whole new set of questions. What would this mean for our immediate and long-term future? How much care would I need and how soon? We always look forward to traveling in retirement. Would that be possible? What would I be able to do and how would Parkinson's restrict my activities? Some of the Psalms became my complaints, especially the ones that uh, were read this morning. But I also wanted to turn to Psalm 88 very briefly here. You have put me in the lowest pit, in the darkest depths. Your wrath lies heavily on me. You have overwhelmed me with all your, your waves. I cry to you for help, Lord. In the morning, my prayer comes before you. Why, Lord? Why do you reject me? Why do you hide your face from me? These lament psalms are the most of any one kind of psalms. They're the lament psalms, and they speak for us and give us a language to express ourselves. 22 is the, the psalm that Jesus used on the cross to express his pain and grief. My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Why are you so far from saving me, so far from the words of my groaning? My God, I cry out day by day, but you do not answer. By night, but I find no rest. Do not be far from me, for trouble is near, and there is no one to help. Have you ever felt like that? I'm sure many of you in a variety of situations have, have felt like that, and the Psalms are a good place to read turn to and, and they question God. They come out to God and say, God, where, where are you? And we can also do that. And it's only when we've been through the depths of suffering and recognize that and live through it that we can come up and find healing and restoration. It's a good pro. Uh, situation with the healing process. But then Psalm 40, I noticed a number of these have to do with pits and holes. I waited patiently for the Lord. He turned to me and heard my cry. He lifted me out of the slimy pit, out of the mud and mire. You ever feel like you're in a slimy pit? Well, I think we all do. And I think we can use these psalms to express our truest, deepest feelings to God. Out of the mud and mire, he set my feet on a rock and gave me a firm place to stand. He put a new song in my mouth, a hymn of praise to our God. And I can affirm to that also today. One of the best things I did also was to receive professional counseling. I'm an advocate for getting professional help when, when it's needed. My counselors saw Parkinson's as a major loss in life and wisely led me through the stages of grief. And this for me was very helpful. 
sometimes we think the stages of grief are only for a death or uh, something like that, but they're for any loss. And this was a big loss. You'll remember that the stages of grief are denial, anger, bargaining, depression, and acceptance. And there's a variety of different lists and stuff, so this is the one I chose. Also, I found that working with a spiritual director was an important link to coming to grips with all, with everything that this meant for us. Well, with the medications helping to control the physical aspects of Parkinson's and the counseling helping me to, with my emotions that accompany such a life-changing diagnosis, I was ready to take up the reins of pastoral ministry once again. And for the most part, the old Dennis was back. I could smile again, and I didn't stumble around nearly as much as before. I did need a good afternoon nap and uh, to get me through the day, and, and that's a good thing. But that really did not hinder my work. My medical leave of absence ended in October of 2013, and I continued in the pastoral ministry until September 11 of 2016. And that's when I retired and we moved to Kansas to be closer to grandchildren. Things actually went fairly well during that period of time. And Diane began to sharing the pastoral ministry with me and we finished up the time as working together as co-pastors in Ohio. I will always be grateful to the good people of Grace Mennonite Church in Pandora, Ohio for their wonderful support during this time. They gave me the time I needed to not only get used to the new reality of Parkinson's, but also to begin to come to acceptance of it, even begin new possibilities in life that had not, I had not seen before. One of the things that's helped me a great deal is taking exercise classes at the Newton YMCA. They're not specifically targeting Parkinson's, but they're targeting old people like me, and, uh, and they sp especially the water aerobics has been very helpful for me. Exercises was uh, is always encouraged for people with Parkinson's, of course anybody else too. In fact, they say that of all the medicines, if they could have what exercise does, they would make a million dollars on a medicine that copies what exercise does. So let's get up and get moving. Our church families have also been crucial. I mentioned earlier our last congregation in Ohio and the strong support from Eden Mennonite Church has also been with us the last four years. I also participated in a Parkinson support group and was in the leadership team of that group in Kidder and Bethel until the pandemic just closed that down and we haven't had it since March. Well, maybe all of you have heard this statement. I might have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's does not have me. I might have Parkinson's, but Parkinson's does not have me. Most of the time I can affirm that saying. I'm not letting Parkinson's get me the, down. I'm not letting Parkinson's take away the old Dennis again. However, I know that sometimes Parkinson's does have me. I don't think I ever go a day with when I don't think of how Parkinson's is affecting my life. In times like this, I need to be reminded of who I am and whose I am. One of my favorite Bible verses is the passage from 1 John 3. How great is the love the Father has lavished upon us that we shall be called children of God, and that is what we are. I am a child of God, and nothing can take that away from us. I am a child of God created in God's image. Parkinson's not, cannot take that away, and I can live in that reality. Of course, a special passage on that is Romans 8. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. 
nothing, cancer, Parkinson's, any other, Lou Gehrig's disease, you name it, it cannot separate us from the love of God. It cannot take away our childhood as God's children. Sometimes with these diseases, it's, it's easy to forget that. But we need to live in that reminder. I need the community to help me live in that reality. We all need the community. We're not meant to live alone. And maybe that's why this pandemic is so difficult that we just can't get together as much as we used to. When I was in high school, the theme for the youth group was Jesus' words from John 10:10. 10, 10. I have come that you might have life and have it to the full, the abundant life. Parkinson's was not the abundant life. I was beginning to look forward to retirement and it did not include this. It seemed sometime that this abundant life was being stolen from me. And now I realize that the abundant life is just as much for me as for anyone else. It is not dependent on whether I am well or not well. I need to convince myself each day to choose this life abundantly or not. The choice is always ours. Finally, there's another verse in 1 Peter, no, it's not 1 Peter, it's James 1. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds. Did you hear that? Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of joy. Because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking in anything. Pure joy. There's got to be something wrong with that. I'm going to tear that page out of my Bible. What does that mean? Count it pure joy. Well, first of all, I believe that God does not give us the trial. Trials come. We live in a sinful world. God does not want me or anyone else to have Parkinson's. That's not God's will. But we have sickness and illness that we have to deal with. God does not want us to have Parkinson's. He doesn't want us to have any suffering at all. He has created us to be his children in that way. But we have pure joy, not in the Parkinson's, but in the opportunity to learn things. Now let me ask you a question. How many of you have learned more lessons by either trials or bad things happening in your life or things going well and just doing what you want to do and everything else? Which, which do you learn more from? Well, obviously we learn more from the suffering. Richard Rohr is a writer that I read a lot. And almost, it seems like almost every week or so, he gets to that theme is that we gotta go through some suffering in order to come out on the other side. We can't grow without that. In closing, I'd like to introduce you to my favorite hymn. And it's one we're gonna sing in a little bit, but I wanted to read the words of it. It's one of the new ones that came out and in this hymn book, it's number 640. And you can turn to that uh, if you want to, because I think this is a hymn that, that expresses a lot what I've been trying to say today. And I'm not sure it's gonna be in the new hymnal when it comes out. I kind of hope so, but you never, you never know for sure. I have the sister-in-law on that committee and I've been lobbying to get this hymn in there, but my love, my lobbies don't count for much. This is what it says. This is a day of new beginnings. Time to remember and move on. Time to believe what love is bringing. Laying to rest the pain that's gone. For by the life and death of Jesus, God's mighty spirit now as then can make for us a world of difference as faith and hope are born again. Then let us with the Spirit's daring step from the past and leave behind our disappointment, guilt, and grieving. 
seeking new paths and sure to find. Let, let them rest, let them go, leave them behind. Christ is alive and goes before us to show and share what love can do. This is a day of new beginnings. Our God is making all things new. Amen.